Hey, hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, quick video on doing lithophanes using uh, Idea Maker and um, on your CR10 or on whatever other printer you want. But uh, this will help you uh, get through how to set it up correctly, um, at least as a good starting base to build a, a litho profile <clears throat> and, um, and get you started. Uh, this is one I did um, recently. This was an old family photo and uh, doing this for an extended family member and um, had some problems with it but you know through some tweaking and things like that got a pretty decent good profile set up and one that you can uh, tweak rather easily to make like a fine detail medium detail low detail type of uh, type of thing so <clears throat> this was the here's uh, the end result in point two and, and you know again I'm taking photos here with uh, my cell phone so not great but it turned out really nice the pictures don't do it justice here's uh, another one this one was also done at point two so really good detail this is a, a basketball playing card of a friend of a friend that we printed as a, like a, a keepsake keepsake for him and then um, this was another just a little like a random fun test one I did for my kid um, and this one was done flat so I either will do them flat or have the outer curve and there's lots of different ways to do it but um, and then there are some tips and tricks um, that you can use that you, well, that you'll probably need to use um, once you start the print on your control box um, that will help sort of guarantee that you're or not guarantee I, I make no guarantees um, but uh, will help you get some good results I think on um, lithophanes in general uh, and then if you are having maybe some under extrusion problems um, I think I may know a little bit about why that's happening and I think there's a little bug in idea maker but it's easily uh, overcome so anyway um, I'm hoping everyone kind of knows about this um, 3dp rocks forward slash lithophane um, that's how I set mine up I'll put a link in this video to the video I used and learned on how to do this because the guy was really good and really detailed on it and I'm not going to trample on his work um, but uh, I used basically his settings um, his setup as far as the images and, and the model and things like that and it's been uh, really well so I'll put a shout out to him and a link to his video uh, in the description um, so once you go through the 3dp rocks and you get your uh, STL file of your lithophane and you load it here um, in idea maker so let me get rid of this one we'll just do this one fresh because there is uh, something unique to idea maker um, that's kind of nice and that is when you load this <coughs> the STL files that come off of um, uh, 3dp rocks often have some non manifold edges in them and so if you don't have a slicer that has some kind of model um, repair type of features in it uh, you wouldn't know it like Kira doesn't tell you uh, I don't know if S3D does or uh, but I know I think uh, matter hacker or, or sorry matter control um, not sure does but I know anyway so I know idea maker does which is really nice so uh, you just go to if you do have the, some non-manifold edges you go here to repair and hit OK, <clears throat> and it will repair it. It was, will take a few minutes, and while it does, I will sing, actually a few seconds, but I will sing you a song. Kidding. Um, the, just a couple seconds here, and it'll go. So anyway, it'll repair it, um, and this will help ensure you don't have any weird artifacts in the print. The print head's not moving in an odd, um, you know, in an odd way. It's not you're not uh, getting under extrusion due to a bad STL, things like that. If you're getting under extrusion after this, it's because, um, you know, a mechanical issue typically. So anyway, so now we're good. you got the green checkbox. <clears throat> you're all set to go. One thing I do like to do with, with all lithophanes is um, I know I've seen lots of people print them um, parallel here to the X axis, um, which is totally fine. I'm sure people get, uh, I've seen some really good ones come out. I think if, you're going to go tall, like taller than this 100 millimeter kind of standard that comes out of 3DP rocks. Uh, I think the bed shift back and forth like this when it's doing shells and infill ultimately is going to cause this ST, uh, this model to start to wobble and you're going to get some weird artifacts towards the top of the print. So uh, what I like to do is rotate uh, and do parallel to the Y axis because then your bed is simply moving back and forth this way and it's not going to put side to side drift as much um, on the model because the bed's not shaking, uh, your model's not shaking perpendicular to your bed movement. 
Um, so once you have this oriented right, um, I've done it both where I printed them in the middle, and I've also done them where uh, I print them sort of you know right here. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I haven't seen a difference in it whether they print here or over here. Um, so then from this point, you're going to go ahead and uh, start. And uh, I have a litho profile. If you don't have one yet, take uh, any basic profile you have, like a PLA basic, or just take any PLA one you have. It doesn't really matter. And um, one that you've used preferably on your CR10 uh, is a good start. And then you can say duplicate and you can rename it. So like here, say duplicate. Uh, you can rename it from, let's say, you know, if you were using a PLA, you know, one, two, three, you can just rename it this to litho standard or litho fine. Uh, let's just call this one litho standard, okay? And uh, and then it'll be, it'll pop in here in your list. You go to edit. And um, so one of the things I do, and, and I've seen it go both ways, and I've seen result, good results both ways, <clears throat> I like um, the least amount of head movement possible from a printer perspective and for me that is with um, a zero infill but a whole bunch of shells so you're basically just using the shells to do to mimic your 100 percent infill and it's not um you know the the nozzle the print head is not moving back and forth rapidly to try and uh, fill in those spaces with every little um, last bit of plastic that it can and potentially grab that lithophane and throw it off the bed for you um, it sucks uh, coming home to a spaghetti monster. I do uh, a brim. I don't do any support. You don't need it. So there's a, a couple of the tabs in here we're just going to ignore. Uh, and even if there's stuff in them, it doesn't matter because if you don't choose support in Idea Maker, it's not going to load those support uh, variables in your G code. So I do brim. Uh, and then once again, zero infill. And I just do a whole bunch of shells. You can get away with six or eight or whatever, but I know I'm not going to have more than 10. It's only going to use what it needs to make the lithophane. So you can put 100 in there. It doesn't matter. It's only going to use like four because um, this isn't a real thick thing. So anyway, uh, go to advanced. And we'll just start here at the first tab. So this is sort of, like I said, the standard sort of detail. So we're going to do a 0.2 millimeter. Uh, here in your layer height, you're going to do 0.4 with your uh, your nozzle or your extrusion, blah, extrusion width, right? This is your print nozzle's diameter. Um, default printing speed, I do 30. Inner shell, I do 30. Outer shell, I slow it down to 20, right? Because that's the detail, uh, that's the detail skin of the litho. So I want to make sure that's the um, the nozzle is nice and primed and moving slowly around and getting a good bead down. Uh, um, for that final coat there. My X and Y axis movement is uh, capped at 100. Doesn't, it really is going to get that fast because you're, you're only going to move from one corner of the curve across to the other one. And um, Anyway, that, so this, leave it at 100. It's fine. Z axis movement speed, 25 millimeters per second. That's totally fine. Um, I'm not using a skirt, so it doesn't matter. The skirt loops, like I said, even though there's something there, it uh, doesn't matter. You don't have a skirt because you're using a brim. So I do brim loops 8. Uh, and then I do an offset of 8 millimeters. And then my first layer height is slightly thicker than my standard layer height. So I do a 0.22. And I keep my first layer speed at 30 millimeters per second. And um, I do up this first layer flow rate to 102. Uh, this is the bug, though, in Idea Maker, And I think that uh, I don't... I don't think it matters what you set here. Uh, my CR10 always says 98 when I throw anything uh, from Idea Maker to the CR10. Uh, my flow rate is always 98%. And so I'll show you uh, how to change that in the control box, and that will really help you um, get a good quality print. So there's the, the layer. Again, infill. You can put in here whatever you want. Uh, it's not going to matter because on that first screen we looked at, we did zero infill. So it's going to just ignore this. Uh, you can put whatever the heck you want for supports because it's just going to ignore it. You didn't put supports. No raft. Um, don't worry about any of this. doesn't matter. Cooling. I keep pretty much the, um, the default settings on the cooling tab. Minimum layer print time, 15 seconds. Default fan speed is 100. Uh, max fan is 100. And the minimal printing speed, uh, 10. And then I have it come on at layer 2. So my layer 1 has no fan. 
Layer 2 has got 100, and then I've got a bed temp here at 50, and my extruder temp uh, for this particular PLA is 205. Now, obviously, these things you're going to have to tweak. Um, if you print, if you think your stuff's printing really well at 190 or 195, well, then change it. Uh, if you can't get anything to stick to your bed unless your bed temp is 60 or 65, well, then change it. Um, this is what's been working for me, but maybe start here and then work your way up. Uh, tweak it. <coughs> Ooze. So I do enable retraction uh, on the lithos, and what I found is that, that even with all of the movement and even though you're not doing infill, there is lots of retraction steps happening, um, retraction moves happening when it's doing a, um, a lithophane. And so I actually kind of tone it down a little bit. Um, I don't do like, a, so if I'm doing a six millimeter retraction and a 60 millimeter per second speed on retraction on like a normal quote unquote print, uh, I slow it way down. Uh, for lithos, because there's so many of them, you don't want to inadvertently have a clog. So, um, retraction speed, 40. My retraction material amount, so this is your retraction distance, is 3 millimeters, so just not even pulling it all the way out of the nozzle, right? Just enough so it doesn't ooze all over the place. Uh, minimal travel of retraction, 0.5. Minimal amount, 0 0.02. Zero on the restart. The restart speed is 20, and the Z-hop is 0.2. I do force retraction on layer change, um, and I get a very little bit of stringing on the back of the curved lithophane, and that it just knocks right off. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it doesn't hurt the quality of the print on the front side at all. Um, avoid retraction inside model. Um, sure, doesn't matter uh, because it's really not going to move inside the model when you have a curved lithophane. Um, this probably matters a little bit more if you have a flat lithophane that you're printing standing up in parallel to the Y. Uh, but you can just leave this checked and then if you're getting a weird result, then uncheck it. Um, but I've, I've had good results either way. Um, the other I don't really mess with. The only thing I do know is that on the other, I think by default, this check thin wall, uh, single extrusion width is checked. So it's, it's looking for super thin walls. Um, you know from uh, if you so I know on this particular lithophane that my thinnest portion of my lithophane is 0.8 so there's nothing to check I don't have I'm not going like 0.5 or 0.4 and there's nothing small there uh, I don't even have it do it uh, the only other thing I do here is this um, my uh, the Z seam I do a fixed point <coughs> a fixed seam and I try and put it as close to 150 by 300 on the bed, so it sort of puts it at that back corner of the lithophane, and it doesn't like throw a seam up some dude's face. Um, so I either try and put it in the back and then into a corner. And then nothing on the G-code tab changes. Um, all that stays the same. Uh, so there you go, you're good. Um, hit OK. And save and close, and now you have your litho profile. You simply hit slice. It will slice this pretty quick. And there you go, three hours and 10 minutes. And the one I did of this guy was bang on three hours and 10 minutes off my printer. Um, I'm amazed at how um, uh, how close idea makers estimates are to, um, to actuals. <coughs> now again, so we can hit the preview here and we'll look at the shells and you can tell the difference too. Um, Move this guy around, and so I'll just sort of come down here. But you see the shells, how it fills up with the shells, <coughs> and there are maybe one or two little gaps here and there. But um, honestly, you don't notice them in the uh, final piece, uh, the final quality of the piece, and you're much less likely to have your nozzle dig into the print and throw it off the table. So there you go. You're all set to go. Um, so then you export this to your SD card or send it to your printer however you want to do it. So with that, uh, so you send it to your printer, you start the print and it starts heating the bed and heating the nozzle and all that good stuff. Uh, you need to go to this little menu inside uh, the control box <clears throat> and you can only do this once you've started the print. You can't go to the tune menu until your print is running. So you go to tune and then you go to, you get this little nice little screen, you have your speed and your nozzle temp and you can make tweaks here and there. Uh, the fan speed is zero because uh, my first layer is zero. 
Now, if you know, remember though, I set, I told Idea Maker that my my first layer flow rate should be 102, and it always defaults to 98 no matter what. And again, I'm only seeing this when I use Idea Maker. So what I do is I kick this um, to 100, somewhere between 100 and 102. I've gotten good results anywhere on those or in between. So you just want to tick this up, you just click on it, tick it up to 100, hit your little control knob, beep, and you're set. And um, that's all you gotta do. If you like put a sticky note on your control box, flow 102, 100, whatever you wanna do, as a reminder so that when you start the print, you remember to go back in and set that. Um, if you've been having other under extrusion issues with Idea Maker, like uh, you've got circles and your, your walls aren't connecting for some reason, um, and it's because you've, you know, you've set a higher layer height or a higher flow rate and it's just not doing it, well, that's why. And so if you tweak those up, um, you'll get some nice, solid, good first layer porn going on. Um, so, anywho, again, um, so if you want, so one last quick little note, if you want to tweak that profile and you want to do a fine or a medium or whatever, then again, you take your litho, you say duplicate, and we'll call this um, litho fine and okay. Oops, I already got an existing. Okay, great. Uh, here it is. Um, and all the only difference is, is under your layer tab, is you change this to maybe 0.1 or 0.08. 0.08's crazy detail. Um, and you change your first layer to just something a little bit bigger. Like I usually do a 0.02 bigger on my first layer than my normal layer height. Uh, and that seems to work just fine. And so there you go. Have fun with it. Again, you're going to have to tweak it, right? These settings are for my printer, my workshop, my stuff. Um, and uh, so you're going to have to play with it a little bit. But I think if you start there, it's at least a good baseline for you to start with. So uh, anywho, have fun. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Um, subscribe. And uh, I'm trying to you know, maybe pump out a video once a week or so. And uh, have fun.